One of the key ways to train for space is to simulate space on Earth. This is what an analog astronaut mission is. It is based on locations that have physical similarities to the extreme space environments. And just like ESA and NASA, it can be highly selective. Today, I chat with Dr. Deepa Lucy, a consultant at the NHS and a member of the Austrian Space Forum, which is one of the most selective analog astronaut missions in the world. And if you stay till the end, I will let you know what skills are required to become an analog astronaut and you can see whether you could become one. So let me tell you about how you can experience Mars on Earth. Let's get into it. Firstly, they allow you to make mistakes in a controlled way. At the end of the day, it is better to make a mistake here than in space where it could be fatal. Check out my video, Surviving in Space Without a Spacesuit, where I tell you about some of the risks that astronauts face in space. A link to that video is in the description box below. There are many technologies such as spacesuits which are designed for space missions that need further testing. And so this is one of the benefits of analog astronaut missions. They allow you to test these technologies and see whether they are viable for actual space missions. So analog missions can help us find the best way to carry out certain tasks, use technologies and implement processes. But one key way an analog astronaut mission prepares someone for space is by testing their mind, their psychology. Because you see some astronauts go up to the International Space Station for a year, being away from family, friends and gravity. This is why some of the people who create these missions take great care in selecting analog astronauts, considering their personalities and checking whether they will get along. And analog missions in general give us a good idea on how people will deal with isolation. So Deepa Lucy was part of the flight crew for the Austrian Space Forum. Now she hasn't been an analog astronaut for the Austrian Space Forum, but has been an analog astronaut for, a, for another organization. But instead here she was actually the medic working with the analog astronauts, meeting any medical demands that was needed during the mission. So they've developed two spacesuits which are tested by the crew during their missions, but there is more, way more. The Austrian Space Forum is unique because they, they have developed two spacesuits which they, um, which are very, you know, top of the range. It's very, I think it's one of the few European agencies that are actually testing spacesuits. It, it simulates, you know, the microgravity because um, uh, it has an exoskeleton underneath the suit itself. Obviously, Mars has desert type environments, but it also has cold environments and glacier type environments. Austrian Space Forum have done both desert missions and glacier type missions. For example, in Amadi 2020, they chose Israel, um, the Negev Desert, which was testing a hot environment. So analog astronauts need to be in good physical health and this is because the space that they wear is quite heavy. There is a risk of heat stress because they end up doing experiments which take hours in the heat, which is one of the reasons the requirements are quite similar to ESA and NASA. For these missions, it helps to come from a STEM background and this is because they carry out experiments such as geological, medical and robotic. However, certain topics are taught to the analog astronauts upon selection, such as geology. The crew is also given basic basic medical training such as trauma management and first aid but if there's an actual medical incident they have a medic on site and that was a role that Dr Deepa Lucy played in a previous mission. Once the host country gets selected then there's the, pro the background, there's a process of um, which experiments are going to be selected and that for that, if not, if for that to happen about, about a year and a half before the mission um, these different researchers submit proposals, which then get selected. So for Amity 20, we had about 20 experiments or more than 20 experiments, I think even 25 plus experiments that got selected. Um, and that could be uh, medical, robotics, uh, human factors, like varying like spectrum of um, STEM subjects that they select. We also have a crew selection. The astronauts go through a selection process. So there's three stages through the, for the astronaut selection process. And that happens over five months. So first they put out a call for um, asking for analog astronaut applications. And then over five months, um, I think last time over 100 candidates applied for the, the last mission. You have three to four selection days where they are put through different tests. Um, and 
the tests are very similar to the the ESA application form actually so it would be you know answering physics questions doing some experiments um, testing see how they work under pressure how they work as a team further um, further down the, the selection process they get physical testing so like CPAT testing to check their breathing and all of these other things now I think last time they had about six to eight um, even more, slightly more candidates selected and once they get selected they all go through similar training so they all go through medical training like first aid training fire training the suit training so the suit in itself to, you know to be trained to dawn and doff and troubleshoot um the suit that that's a whole nother um training process in itself and they go through all of that you have different teams you have the medical team which is the bme team the biomedical team there's a human factors team there's a flight planning team and all of them sort of work on their individual um uh, know how they're gonna prepare for the mission and then we get together in, uh, in a telecom together with all the leads to discuss how as a group we're gonna plan the mission together we had one week time where we would do um, uh, just preparations with the habitat and everything and checking setting up Wi-Fi and all these other things we had to do because obviously all of these things are not there so in the desert so we had to set up Wi-Fi make sure the habitat was thing all the food was ordered and before isolation period started and then the isolation period started and which was for about three weeks um, and then we would carry out EVAs and monitor stuff, etc. And we all had roles. And the flight planning is done before we even get there. So they had a, for each day, we had a very clear roles of who was doing what, um, exact start times, end times. It was, it was very strict as it would be for an ESA. It was very similar to how that would run. Yeah, so when I got there, my role was to make sure all the medical equipments were available. So we had some things missing, which we were able to source locally, like defibs and oxygen, etc. So the usher in space for a mission is about three to four weeks long, which means they're basically in isolation for about a month. So the only time they actually get out of their habitat is for a simulated EVA mission and the only people they have in contact with other than their fellow crew members is mission control and flight crew. However, that's by email and call. So the only people they see face to face for the, you know, the rest of the three to four weeks are their fellow crew members, which is why it is crucial to be able to work as a team. Be three to four weeks isolation uh, where they're just in there is all them they're self-sufficient they do everything themselves they do the experiments they they take experiments they even analyze things they have a microscope and everything analyzes them um, yeah it's pretty much like if you were on a if you were on a habitat on mars so they may be able to bring their phones with them but they don't have great signal also they have these days called black days where they don't carry out any experiments so they may be able to contact family and friends via email and such but the signal is limited and generally it's only for emergency so they're basically going three to four weeks with limited contact to the outside world So the analog astronauts come from varying backgrounds, whether that be geology, engineering, physics and so on. But the trait that they all have in common is the ability to know how experiments work. Also the ability to follow instructions and work in a team. They also have to be able to communicate clearly and this is because they will be in touch with their mission control and flight crew via email and call. So being able to communicate clearly is critical. A lot of the time, it doesn't matter how much you plan, something unexpected can happen. This is life. But in an analog astronaut mission, it happens quite a bit. Being able to deal with the unexpected without getting frustrated or angry and being able to solve problems creatively with what you have. Because sometimes the resources that they will have will be limited. So being able to solve problems with um, what they have in front of them is something they'll have to do quite a bit on a mission. It's very similar psychological testing. It's very similar. Um, you know physics and all of that bit and, and mental resilience that sort of um, experiments i think the other aspect of it i would say is the media bit of it as well and how you communicate your experiments and how you get that across to people is really important because a big part of austria's space was also outreach work um and I, which i think is fantastic they go out to schools and they go out and they they talk about because there's no point in doing these things and actually not communicating that to the bigger world i think which is what i like what um what you're doing with trying to tell people about things We had robotics, we had a drone, 
medical research as well. So we looked at ultrasound machine um, and about remote um, operating and how you teach astronauts to do that. They had um, just to see how if you can track the astronauts' um, pattern in the in the habitat and check for heat stress and all these things. A lot of geology experiments, as you'd imagine. I think that'd be a big part of the Mars stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you some insight on how people like you and I can prepare for space. There are also other analog astronaut organizations out there, such as the ones you can see here. Now, do you want to go and become an analog astronaut or have you already um, experienced being one? If so, drop a comment below. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, stay safe and hopefully one day I will see you in space.